My name is Olivia, and I live in Malaysia. I moved there when I was 14 and was staying at my cousin's house in 2011. My family had no intention of visiting my cousin's house in Langkawi, but my aunt suggested that we do so for four weeks. This detail will be very important later in the story. We informed our relative, whom I would call Kay, about our upcoming trip during a quick visit to her home. She became obsessed with the idea of visiting Langkawi because she hadn't seen her family in a long time. So she begged my dad to take her with us on the trip, but he said no because we were going to my cousin's house and wouldn't be staying in a motel. She, of course, said she could handle it and all she wanted was to see her family again. But my father said no again. To clarify why he said no, let me describe Kay and who she was. Kay was 24, one of my aunt's sisters. She worked as a zoologist and earned enough money to travel to Langkawi, rent a motel room, and visit her family on her own. Because she knew all of this, my father stormed out of her house in rage when she kept asking about the trip. Also, it was Saturday, and we were leaving for the trip that day. A few hours later, while waiting for the ferry, I noticed a woman with long brunette hair looking at me. I thought nothing of it and assumed she was taking the same ferry as us. After 30 minutes of waiting, we were finally able to board the ferry. After my family took our assigned seats, I noticed the same woman I had seen earlier sitting not far away, just three seats behind me. Once again, I dismissed it and assumed she was sitting in the seat she had paid for. After two hours, we arrived at the dock, disembarked from the ferry, and began walking to the passport scanning area. And guess what? The same woman was following us there. I got chills and the creeps from her, so I told my father what was happening. He then told me that he had noticed it as well, but did not want to tell me because it might scare me. Later, we just waited outside the building for my aunt to arrive and pick us up. After what seemed like two hours, she arrived and greeted us. I kept quiet during the car ride because I was still scared of the woman with the long brunette hair. After about 45 minutes, I looked behind us and noticed a taxi. The previously mentioned woman was in the passenger seat staring straight ahead. I was terrified, but I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want them to think I was making everything up. After two weeks on the trip, I'd almost forgotten about the woman. It was nighttime, and I was sleeping soundly until I awoke to red and blue lights flashing outside. I got up and asked one of my cousins what had happened. I wish I had known sooner about what I was going to find out. My aunt's sister, Kay, had brunette hair. One of the locals was walking around and noticed Kay trying to break into the house. They did not recognize Kay and were suspicious, so they called the police, which was a good thing. Kay was holding a knife and a gun in her pocket, intending to kill my cousins. Apparently, her reason was that my father told her she couldn't join the trip. To this day, I wonder what would have happened if the residents hadn't called the police. I'm a female second-year college student from the Philippines studying civil engineering. This incident occurred several months ago, and I will never forget it. One night, I had a nightmare in which something horrible happened. I couldn't remember what happened in the dream, but I remember seeing a date inscribed on the wall. The date was July 27, 2022. The next morning, I told my older sister about my dream and asked her to remind me of the date when it arrived. Time passed and I finally forgot about it. But one morning, as I was getting ready for school, I felt that I didn't want to go. Something was bugging me and my sister felt the same way, but I went regardless. My college has two school buildings, one for each course's department, and my department's building is adjacent to the highway. The building has five stories. My first class was on the fourth floor. The lesson began as normal. I took notes while our professor was lecturing. A few minutes into the class, one of my classmates exclaimed aloud, The ground is shaking. When the rest of us observed it, the ground began to shake much more violently, to the point where our teacher collapsed. The lockers were shaking so fiercely that they nearly toppled down, and we were all terrified because we were on the fourth story. When the earthquake ended, a tricycle driver, a type of taxi driver in the Philippines, guided us down to safety. As I exited the building, I saw kids crying and in astonishment, and when my family called, I burst into tears too. They checked with me to ensure I was okay, and my father said he'd pick me up. 
After safely arriving home, I sat on our sofa, still trying to calm myself down, and glanced at the calendar on our door. The date was July 27, 2022, and when I realized the link with my dream, I was astonished that I nearly started crying. It's been months since the occurrence, yet I'm constantly thinking about it and my dream. Was the date in my dream a coincidence, or was it a warning about what would come? This is a story of something that happened to me when I was in my early 20s. Aaron, my friend at the time, was into a strange religion, which was more of a cult than a religion. I told him not to believe in such things, but he didn't listen to me. He said that all people who believed in that religion were extremely wealthy and asked me if I was curious as to why. Then he said, Everyone has their own luck, but did you know that you can steal someone else's luck? Bro, what would it be like if you could have money, fame, health, everything? Imagine you could reach the top of this world. I told him that was superstition, but he raised his voice and said, I saw our leader create cracks in other people's souls and drain their luck. It's like taking someone's wallet without anyone knowing. People who lose their luck suddenly find their lives ruined without even knowing why. Our religious leader has amassed so much fortune by stealing so much luck that now his house is so full of wads of money that there's no room to fit it in. I felt that Aaron had fallen into the wrong circles, and I wanted to save him somehow, so I cursed at him and told him to come to his senses. Then he glared at me scarily. His eyes looked like that of a wild animal that had been starving for a long time. He whispered to me, Watch how my life changes. Be prepared to be surprised. Everyone will envy me. When I saw the look in his eyes, I realized that I could no longer persuade him. As time passed, he became more and more absorbed in the religion, and eventually he stopped seeing his friends. Also, no matter when I called him, he was always reciting a spell. What was really strange was that when I saw him a few months later, his face had turned horrifying. He lost weight and his skin dried out, making him look like a dry tree walking around. Still, he told me everything was going well. He continued to look at people passing by and recited his spell. He followed people who looked particularly rich for a while, staring intently at their faces. When I told him to please stop believing in that religion, he told me, If I just learn a little more, I'll completely master the art of witchcraft. Then the luck of all the people in front of me will become mine. I was eating at a restaurant with him and he was reading a religious book even while eating. He said that the magic method of stealing luck is a secret technique that has been passed down to only a very small number of people since ancient times and that he spent all his money to learn it. I told him it was all a hoax, but he laughed and screamed like a crazy person. If you don't know anything, keep quiet. <laughs> because I worked hard recently and had been promoted at work, I tried to encourage him that if he lived a good life like me, his life would turn out just fine. He looked surprised when he heard my story, then suddenly grabbed my hand and chanted a spell at incredible speed. His eyes seemed to be on fire and he held my hand so hard that it felt like it would break. I was startled and shook off his hand. I was annoyed, but at the same time I felt sorry for him and wanted to take him to a psychiatrist. After dinner, I went home. But that night, I experienced something very bizarre. While I was sleeping, I felt someone's presence, and when I opened my eyes, Aaron was in front of me. However, he was not standing, but floating in the air. I thought it was a dream and tried to wake myself up, but my body wouldn't move. He smiled brightly and shouted, Meeting you like this makes me feel different, bro! For some reason, an ominous feeling enveloped me. Aaron smiled and recited the spell, and he put his hand on my chest. Then, I suddenly felt intense hopelessness, and the world in front of me became increasingly dark. Then, he closed his eyes. His gaunt face looked happy. I struggled with all my might, finally freed myself from paralysis, and punched him. He screamed and disappeared like smoke. I sat there wondering if this was a dream, but it was too vivid to be. I wondered what on earth this meant. But then I realized something I didn't want to believe. 
Aaron had come to steal my luck. My name is Mateus. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm currently 18 years old. This story happened two years ago. That year, I lived with my parents, my younger sister, and our recently adopted dog. One day, my parents came to tell me that they were going away for a few days to celebrate their 20th wedding anniversary, and that I would be responsible for taking care of the apartment. I didn't mind too much, as I had already done this several times. The first day that they were gone, my sister came to ask me if she could stay at a friend's house for a sleepover. I loved being alone, and since I didn't see any problem with a sleepover, I allowed her to go. So she got her things, and I took her to her friend's house, which was a block away from our complex. It was very hot that day, so when I got back to the apartment, I was sweating a lot. Right after that, I went to take a shower, and when I was done, I decided to watch a movie. While the movie was playing, a loud noise came from the hallway. It spooked me and I ended up jumping off the couch. I didn't know what caused the sound, so I went to see what had happened. When I got to the hall, I realized that my bedroom door had closed by itself. I didn't make a big deal of it, as this often happened when it was windy, so I opened the door and put a slipper in front of it so it wouldn't close again. A few minutes later, the same thing happened. When I opened my bedroom door, I noticed that the slipper was in the corner of my room and now the lights were on. This time I realized it was strange because it wasn't actually windy enough for that to happen, but I decided to close my bedroom window anyway. When the movie ended, I decided to give my dog a treat. I went to the kitchen to get it and went to my parents' room since my dog's bed is next to their bed, but he wasn't there. I looked in the living room, in my bedroom, and in my sister's bedroom, but I still couldn't find him. That's when I decided to look in the bathrooms and found him lying under the shower in my parents' bathroom, trembling in fear. Again, I found this strange because my dog usually only did this when there was a storm or when someone set off a firework, and neither of those had happened. That night, I was sitting on my bed, scrolling through social media and listening to music when, out of nowhere, there was a loud buzzing sound in my right ear and unintelligible whispers in my left ear. This went on for two or three minutes and then stopped. It gave me goosebumps, but since it was so late, I tried to ignore it and go to sleep. But obviously, I couldn't fall asleep, and as I tried to calm down lying in bed, The worst part of that night was about to happen. I heard a girl's voice whispering in my ear, wake up, I'm here to see you. At the instant I got up, looking through the door of my room, I realized that there was something in the middle of the hallway. Since I slept with my room's lights off, but with the hallway light turned on, I could see that there was a girl standing there. She was pale, had long blonde hair, was wearing a plain white dress, and was barefoot. However, the weird part is that her face was blank. No eyes, no nose, no mouth, nothing. She stood there for some time until out of nowhere, she turned and headed towards my sister's room. I froze in fear. After gathering some courage, I got up and went to my sister's room. Going in there, I realized that there was no one there. I looked around the rest of the apartment, but no one was there. Even my dog was lying in his bed, asleep like nothing happened. That night, I couldn't fall asleep, and I decided to stay in the living room with all the lights on watching random TV shows. Around 1 p.m., my sister texted me saying she was going to have lunch at her friend's house and that her friend's dad would drive her over in two hours. When she arrived, I decided to not tell her anything that happened because I knew it would scare her too much. Two days later, my parents came back from their trip, and I didn't tell them either because they would say that I was paranoid and that I was just making up the story to scare my sister. Months later, we moved into a bigger apartment and nothing more happened. One day, while I was home alone again, I decided to research on the internet about the old apartment complex we lived in, and I found something weird. Years ago, four people who lived in that complex all died on the same week. A woman who was murdered, a teenager who died of an overdose, and a woman and her daughter who died in a car accident. To this day, I still have many unanswered questions. What happened that day? Who was that girl in my apartment? What was she doing there? 
Why was her face blank? And does she have anything to do with those deaths? A few years ago, a new horror concept cafe opened in my neighborhood. Excited, I went there with Levi and Owen, and when we went inside, there were statues larger than people depicting Dracula, Bigfoot, Frankenstein, aliens, etc., and voices were coming out of them. I approached the Dracula statue, and it spoke in a very scary voice. Making a latte with blood is really delicious. Are you ready to have your blood harvested? I ran away, and he laughed in a creepy voice. Because the statues were so large, I thought there were employees inside of them. We had so much fun, and we went to that cafe every day from that day on. But a few days later, Levi suddenly stopped replying to my messages. And when I went to his house, I found his parents crying. They told me that Levi had disappeared. We couldn't just sit around and do nothing, so Owen and I decided to search for Levi. We went to all the places he might be, and one of the places we went was that horror cafe. We went up to the statues and asked them if they had seen our friend named Levi. The first three statues responded that they had not seen him, but then the Frankenstein statue spoke. I saw him. We asked Frankenstein where Levi was, but he gave no further answers. But the alien statue suddenly shouted, I miss my planet. Owen and I looked at each other at the same time because the voice coming from the statue sounded like Levi's voice. I walked up to the alien statue and said, Levi, is that you? My voice trembling in fear. The statue replied, Mom is waiting for me on planet Kepler-186. I have to go back. Our eyes widened and jaws dropped because we realized it was definitely Levi's voice. We asked him to come out, asking him what he was doing in there, but he just kept saying strange things. A few days ago, a fat earthling kidnapped me. Earthlings are so scary. After a bit, he went quiet, and with no one else around, it was completely silent. We wondered what to do. Owen and I went home, but went back to the cafe the next day and approached the alien statue again. And at first, we couldn't hear anything inside. I spoke to the statue, Levi? and heard a very small voice inside. Yes, I'm Levi. Get me out of here. I'm so sick right now. It was Levi's voice whispering very softly. When I asked him how to get out, he whispered, tell the cafe owner that you want to go inside the statue. So I told the cafe owner and he readily agreed to my request. I sent Owen a text asking him to report it to the police immediately if he loses contact with me. The cafe owner led me to the basement where there was a secret area where I could enter the statues. The cafe owner made me go inside the Bigfoot statue. As soon as I entered the statue, the smell of blood overwhelmed me. I could see people walking around in the cafe through the small holes in front of me, but at that moment, I heard a sound and the door locked from the bottom. I realized that it was the cafe owner who locked the door from below, and he said to me, From now on, you're my employee. If you act well, cafe sales will increase, right? But if your voice doesn't sound like Bigfoot, I'm going to stab you with this spear of punishment. There were openings on the floor where I was standing, and I could see the tip of a spear in an opening. I panicked. He continued speaking. Come on, try your Bigfoot voice. This spear will judge you on how good you are. The spear tip was very large and covered in blood. I was so scared that I wet myself. Urine dripped through my clothes and onto his spear, and he laughed wildly. I was trapped inside the statue, and when people in the cafe spoke to me, I forced myself to act and respond. Then Owen came up and asked the statue, Mr. Bigfoot, have you seen my friend? So I told him, Your friend is in my body right now because I swallowed him alive. <laughs> I wanted to ask Owen to save me, but the cafe owner was watching from below with the spear, so I had no choice but to act. I watched with dread as Owen walked outside. I was afraid he wouldn't come back. But after a while, 
I could faintly hear police sirens and police officers came into the cafe. Owen had called the police. Eventually, after searching the inside of the cafe, the police came down to the basement. When the police came nearby, I screamed, and I could hear screams coming from the other statues as well. Eventually, the cafe owner's secret area was discovered. People were trapped inside the statues, and as they were rescued, they cried and said they had been trapped inside for dozens of days. We were all released. All of the people who were trapped had rips in their clothes and were covered in bloodstains. I frantically searched, but no matter how much I looked, I couldn't see Levi. I shouted at the cafe owner who was wearing handcuffs. Where is Levi? He replied, He was so bad at acting as an alien, so I stabbed him with my spear. Eventually, the police searched further into the basement and found Levi's body, stabbed to death with wounds matching the cafe owner's spear. Five years have passed now, but I still have nightmares of being trapped inside that statue and having my body pierced by a spear. My name is Ashisha, and I'm from India. This is a story about my sister, Jan. It happened about two years ago when she was studying at a university. Jan was a shy girl, and she would never hang out with anyone. Once on a sunny day, she went to the university as usual, but the day went by and it was already 5 p.m., but she hadn't returned yet. I thought she might be having extra lectures, so I didn't give it much thought. At around 6.30, I tried to call her, but she didn't pick up. I told my parents and they told me not to worry as she's not a kid anymore and that she would return home eventually. But I had a weird feeling about this. It was around 7 p.m. and my parents were out for some work when I tried calling her again, but her phone was switched off. I knew that was strange because she would always pick up when I called or at least text me to respond. My parents came home around 10 p.m. and she still hadn't come back, and now even they were worried. We tried to reach out to her classmates, but they said she didn't attend her lectures that day. After that, my parents and I went to the police to report her as missing. They searched, but it was useless. They never found her. She just disappeared out of nowhere, and eventually it had been three months since she'd gone missing. We were starting to lose hope and stopped searching for her. But then something happened on December 2nd, a school day for me during my last year in high school. When I was coming home from school, I saw her. I saw my sister who had disappeared. I ran to her, called out to her, and she saw me and she started crying. I immediately took her home knowing that my parents would be so happy to see that she was okay. As I walked in with her, my parents were shocked to see her. They came running to her and hugged her. My mom and I were both tearing up too. My parents were so relieved. But Jan's reaction was the opposite. I thought she might need some time. Later on, I took her to my room and asked her what happened and where she had gone for the three months. She just smiled creepily and said, I was kidnapped. I then asked, how did you get away? To my horror, she responded, it was easy. I killed my kidnapper and stabbed him to death. I was shocked. She wasn't sounding like the sister I know, but that time I hadn't noticed yet. After a few days when she was still recovering from the trauma, I went to her room and asked her a strange question. I asked, if you stabbed your kidnapper, then where is his dead body? She then told me, at the edge of the city, there is a forest. And in that forest, there's a small cabinet. Inside it is his body. I was shocked and ran to my parents and they were shocked as well. We told the police and the very next day we went there and there was a cabinet in the forest, as she said. The police opened the door only to find that the dead body was rotten and the clothes on it were my sister's. I couldn't believe my eyes. Like, what was I witnessing? The police took the body to conduct a forensic investigation and it turns out that the dead body was my sister. I was so freaked out when I realized the person who was staying in our house was just claiming to be my sister. All the things that she said were the inverse of what happened. She wasn't the one who stabbed that kidnapper. He was the one who actually stabbed her. But why do all this? And who or what 
was pretending to be my sister. I don't know when they will come again. I don't know when the smell of death will waft into my house again. With these thoughts in mind, I stay up trembling night after night. When I close my eyes, I vividly remember the day they first came to my house. When I first saw them, I thought it was just a one-time nightmare. But it was too late before I realized that they were much more terrible than I thought. It all started that night. That night when the sound of rain filled the world. While I was sleeping, I suddenly heard a loud roar, like lightning striking the front yard, and then the sound of the front door opening. I was startled and ran out into the living room. What I saw before my eyes was an unbelievable scene. The door was open and filled with thick fog and three men were coming in through it. When I shouted at them, asking who they were, they said something in a language I had never heard before. They were wearing black cloaks that covered their entire bodies, so only their faces were visible, and their faces were like sculptures. They were beautiful, yet strange. Their eyes were all yellow, and their pupils were very cloudy, like the eyes of a dead fish. I yelled at them in a trembling voice to get out, but they didn't respond. Then they each walked to dark places in my house, one under the bed, one under the table, and one under the chair. And they each lay down on the floor there, completely still. No matter how much I told them to leave, they wouldn't budge. I called the police, and they came into the house. Absurdly, the police looked at where they were lying and said that all they could see was a black cloak. Even though I kept saying there were people, the police said they couldn't see them and left. I got so angry that I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and yelled at the men lying there to get out, but they didn't even blink. I didn't know what to do. They lay there completely motionless for hours, and when dawn came, they disappeared like smoke. They didn't even go out the front door, they just evaporated. I was so confused. From that day on, their visits continued every night. There was always lightning just before they came, even on days when it wasn't raining. I kept yelling at them to get out, but it was no use. And then at dawn, they would disappear again. I couldn't understand what was happening, and I searched the internet to see if anyone else had experienced something similar, but I couldn't find anything. Their visits continued for more than a month, Eventually, the spots on the floor where they lay were corroding, and my body started hurting here and there. My skin slowly turned purple like there was a lack of blood flow in my body. A strange fluid began to ooze out of my skin, and it felt like my bones were breaking every time I moved my body. When I went to the hospital, the doctor looked at my body and said in shock, "'What on earth have you done to your body?' This is not the body of a living person. The doctor advised me to be hospitalized, but I returned home and fell deep into thought. Then I realized it. It was after they began visiting my house that I started feeling sick. Feeling like I was grasping at straws, I went to a psychic for help. As soon as the psychic saw me, she could smell my body and said, How many people live with you? I was confused and asked what she was talking about, and she said, "'Your roommates.' "'Roommates?' "'I live alone.' "'There are people who come to your house every night. Dead people pretending to be alive.' The psychic shouted, and I was in complete shock. I asked the psychic to help me kick them out. She agreed and came with me to my house. As soon as she entered the house, she started coughing. "'The smell is really terrible.' They've been dead for a long time. She began to chant a spell to summon the spirits, and after a while the front door opened, and there they were, the same ones who came to my house every night. They pointed at the psychic and spoke words I couldn't understand. The psychic shouted at them to take off their clothes. Then, suddenly, they peeled off their skin, as if they were taking off their shell, and then their rotting skeletons became visible. 
Dirt fell to the ground around them, and then a tremendous putrid smell spread in the air. They then pounced on the psychic and started gnawing at her elbows and knees. She screamed for help. I immediately called the police and then tried to kick the skeletons, but they held on to her with such force that I couldn't get them off. Then they grabbed my legs and tried to gnaw at my knees too, so I tried to kick them away and screamed. At that moment, I heard the police sirens. The skeletons then ran out of the house and disappeared into the ground. The police called for an ambulance and took the psychic away. The paramedic said that all the cartilage in the psychic's knees was gone, and he was confused as to what had happened. She had surgery, but the doctor said it would take a long time for her to recover. The next day, I packed my bags and went to my parents' house, and never went near that house again. After leaving, I lost contact with the psychic. I still can't believe everything that has happened. Who on earth were they? Why did they come to my house?